Hello and welcome to this lecture on data types, our objects and attributes. In this lecture, we are going to get into the nitty gritties and details of R. I'm your instructor, Rajesh Durbala, and I'm an assistant professor in business analytics and research methodology. Hope you are ready for this session. Come on, let's go into it and learn some interesting elements of R. The most important, the first and foremost thing that we need to learn about R is the objects, the basic elements. Okay, There are five basic elements or atomic subclasses which are called objects. One is the character, number, which is the real numbers, integer, complex and logical. Logical is true or false. Now, what is character and what is all these? Let us try to understand. Character are the verbal data. Okay. For example, let us say if I am trying to say cat, C-A-T cat in quotations that becomes the character. Okay. Now you have to understand that even though it is not explicitly mathematical, the character string, the data type is very common in statistical analysis and it has to be handled with care. Now for that reason, R has two primary ways of handling a character. Okay. Now character data, either it can be a character and factor. While they may be very similar on the surface, but they are treated quite differently. Okay. We'll learn about it later on, but that is what is character. You have to remember that. Then you have your numeric data. Okay. The numeric data is the same. That is the mathematical expressions. Now, as expected, R excels at running numbers. So numeric data is the most common type in R. The most commonly used numeric data is numeric. This is similar to a float or double in other languages. Like if you are working on C or C++, it's more or less like a float or double plus, uh, sorry, float or double. Now it handles integers and decimals, both positive and negative, and of course, zero as well. A numeric value stored in a variable is automatically assumed to be numeric. Okay, you have to remember this, and it is very important for you to understand this as well. A numeric value stored in a variable is automatically assumed to be numeric. That's a default setting. Testing whether a variable is numeric is done with the function is dot numeric. Okay. Now if I write is dot numeric and whatever the vector I have defined in brackets, I will get the output as true. If it is numeric, if it is false, that is to say it's not numeric. Okay. So the function that you have to remember is is dot numeric in brackets, the vector that you have defined. And uh, other thing similar to numeric, but equally important is, uh, but little, uh, it's less frequently used. It's the integer. As the name implies, this is for whole numbers only and no decimals. To set an integer to a value, it is necessary to append the value with an L, okay, the capital L. As with checking in, uh, as with checking for a numeric, then we will use is dot integer function, okay. So remember, for a numeric data, it is is dot numeric. For integer, it is is dot inter integer. I s is dot integer, okay. Now, then we have your uh, complex objects okay uh, what is complex object uh, let us say complex objects are those kind of an objects you know where uh, you have a mixture a mixture of numeric or character you have both the things then it becomes a complex we'll discuss about it in detail and then we have your logical which is true or false okay Logicals are a way of representing data that can be either true or false. Numerically true is the same as one and uh, false is the same as zero. So true 
let us say true into 5 equals 5 while false into 5 equals 0 okay so this is how R behaves so these are some of the basic objects that we find in R now again the most basic object with which all these objects could be used is a vector and vector can only contain objects of the same class that is to say a single vector can have uh, either characters or numeric or integer or complex or logical but it cannot have a mixture of all okay so you have to remember that a vector this is very important and this is the fundamental okay a vector cannot have uh, mixture of all it can have only one class of objects so that is very very important now a vector is a collection of elements you may have this curiosity what is a vector right vector is a collection of elements of all of same type for instance let us say I may have one three two one five all these are a vector consisting of numbers okay and in that order similarly let us say if I write R or XL or SAS or XL in this vector I have all characters okay so a vector cannot be of mixed type remember this a vector cannot be of a mixed type now vectors play a very crucial and helpful role in R more than being simple containers okay vectors in R are special in that R is a vectorized language okay this is how we can put it R is a vectorized language that means operations are applied to each element of the vector automatically without the need to loop through the vector so this is a very powerful concept that may seem a bit alien to people coming from other languages okay those who have already studied different languages but this is a very powerful concept and uh, it's very essential for you to understand the beauty and appreciate the beauty of it and this is one of the greatest things about R vectors do do not have a dimension meaning there is no such thing as a column vector or a row vector okay remember that vectors do not have dimensions you will never have a row vector or a column vector and uh, next thing is these vectors are not like mathematical vector where there is a difference between row and column orientations okay this is not similar to your mathematical vectors and the most common way of creating a vector is with C okay the C stands for combine or concatenate because multiple elements are being combined into a vector okay this is very very important remember that we'll operate it and learn but this is the basic fundamentals you have to understand now as most of the things everything comes with a you know a caveat here also there is no exception there is an exception for a for the rule that vector can have only one type of an object but uh, there is one exception that exception is a list which is represented as a vector but can contain objects of different classes indeed and uh, that's usually why we use those vectors okay that's the uh, that's the basic purpose of using a vector uh, a list in fact because it can contain objects of different classes okay that was all about objects now okay yeah this is the vector function the then coming to numbers The numbers in R are generally treated as numeric objects and uh, that is double precision real numbers okay so numbers are numeric and uh, that is quite simple as the name suggests then we have if you specially want an integer you need to specify that L, L suffix we have already discussed and uh, for example let us say if I'm entering one it will give you a numeric object but explicitly if I enter one L 
then it will give me an integer okay integer means it won't be in decimals then there is also a special number inf inf which represents infinity okay that is example 1 upon 0 okay inf infinity can be used in ordinary calculations example 1 upon inf is 0 okay similarly you have the value nan n a n represents an undefined value which stands for not a number example let us say 0 upon 0 will give you an output of nan and it can also be used for a missing value okay and more upon it will be discussed in future lectures then we have something very important called attributes attributes are uh, you know our objects can have multiple attributes characteristics okay they are it can have names or dimen uh, dim names okay dim names means dimension names similarly it can have dimensions that is matrices or arrays and uh, matrices will have only you know a row and column and uh, arrays will have multiple rows and columns then you have class then you have length length is number of elements in the vector and then other user defined attributes you can use any of the features and create your own attributes so we will discuss about it in detail that is the metadata as well attributes of an object can be accessed through the attribute bracket function so that's it for today's lecture you can get in touch with me on linkedin facebook twitter you can write to me directly give me feedback about how to improve my lectures you can write to me at rajeshdurbala at gmail.com please do subscribe to my channel and keep yourself updated of the latest lectures being uploaded thank you have a great day